Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the new micro CCD FPV camera from Ishin, the Ishin SpeedyB. In this video I'm going to go through its features and in the end of it I'm going to take it outdoors and compare it side by side with other well-known brands micro CCD FPV cameras. This camera can be bought in two versions, you can either get it on PAL or NTSC. I've got the PAL version and the lens is not selectable and you can only get it with a 2.3mm lens. Inside this box we only get in the camera which pretty much looks like the rest of the micro CCD cameras in the market. We also get in the wire that will enable you to connect it to an OSD board, but that's it. The manual can be found online and they rely on the fact that you probably have another OSD controller at home. So in order to save the cost, they didn't include one with the box. In addition, you're not getting any mounting bracket. So this is the only two things that you get in inside this box. The camera itself looks pretty much like a Micro Swift 2. You can see that it has the same connector on the back. The right pin is the OSD, then the ground, VBAT plus, video, ground, and it supports between 5 to 36 volts, which is the exact working voltage of the Runcom Micro Swift 2. Removing the back stickers also reveals that the board looks pretty much the same. You can see that it's not a 100% exact copy because some capacitors are not located in the same place but their general layout is very very similar and at a glance it looks like almost the same camera. Just like the Runca Micro Swift 2, the SpeedyB uses a 600 TV line Sony CCD sensor. The big difference is at the front part of the camera. You can see that this part is glued directly to the PCB board and is not connected through two screws like the Micro Swift 2 which means that if you are going to damage the front part you are going to need to replace the entire camera whereas on the Runcom Swift 2 this part can be replaced. The front dimensions of this camera are the standard 19 by 19 millimeters and the distance between the back part to the front of the lens is about 20 millimeters. As for its weight it weighs 5.92 grams whereas the Runcom Micro Swift 2 weighs 5.54 grams. The OSD is identical to the OSD of the Runcom Micro Swift 2. You know, to open it, just connect an OSD controller, then press the center button, and then you can go through all the settings, and you can set the exposure. You can turn on and off the wide dynamic range, and you have also other settings like the white balance, day and night, image adjustment, and so on. You can switch between two languages, either English or Chinese, and in order to access the OSD that will show you the current voltage, the timer, and your call sign, you will have to long press the up button and then you can access all these features. You can set the alarm voltage, you can move the name and the timer and the voltage, and you can either set them on and off by just pressing them, and you can also perform a camera reset. Just to show that the OSD is identical to the Runcom Micro Swift 2, now I'm going to disconnect the SpeedyB and connect the Runcom Micro Swift 2. You can see that now we can see the Runcom logo. And if we open the same menu, you can see that it is identical. You can also see that the OSD settings menu is not the same. Over here we have the alarm voltage, but we also have the scene selection which is not available in the Ishin SpeedyB. So the next thing I'm going to do is to take the Ishin SpeedyB outdoors and compare it side by side with the Foxeer Aero Micro Pro, the Runcom Micro Swift 2 and the Cadex Micro Turbo S1. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video and I will see you in the end of this video to give you my conclusion.
So overall, I think that the Ishin's PDB was pretty much at par with the Ranka Micro Swift 2, which is not surprising because it practically uses the same components. You can see a difference at nighttime because I accidentally left the PDB on its default settings and black and white settings was set to color and not to auto as I should have set it to, but this is the default settings that I used and it was my mistake not to set it to auto. I think that the major selling point of the Speedy B when it just came out was its price and now I don't think that the price is that good comparing that the price of the Foxeer Micro Aero Pro for example is cheaper than the price of the Ishin Speedy B and you get in the full package whereas with the Speedy B you're only getting just the cable and that's it, no mountain brackets, no OSD controller. What I do suggest for the other brands Although they did drop the price and the Cadex goes right now for about $29 and I think it was on sale for even less than that. And the only price I think that wasn't dropped is the price of the Ranka Micro Swift 2 which is still about $35. So I think that these cameras should maybe make light versions which means they can sell just the camera with a cable without having to pay for all the extra cables and mounting brackets or OSD controllers. And then maybe it will enable them to drive the price even to a lower selling point because everybody has these OSD controllers and extra brackets so you can make a light version without the accessories and a full package one like the one they're selling today. In addition buying a camera from one of the big brands helps support the industry and of course everybody cares about the pocket but if the price is almost the same and the performance is the same I don't see any reason not to pick one of these cameras instead of the Ishin Speedy B. If it was priced at $10 it was probably a no-brainer but at a very similar cost to the other ones it's something to take into consideration. So as always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful and it will help you to choose your next micro CCD FPB cameras. If you have any questions about any of these cameras, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.